Yeah. So uh, let's move to next presentation, which is around creatives. So uh, the presentation will be run by me and Tiago. So I'll be. Uh, Tiago is actually uh, right now based in, based in US, so it will be hybrid and presentations, a hybrid event, so it should be hybrid presentation as well. So I'll be starting with uh, 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 the first part, and he will be sharing uh, like the, the the second one. We'll be talking about you know how what is really good and important to know if you want to you know run really good campaigns and good creatives on Google campaigns. It seems to be very trivial topic, but it's not actually, and we will go. We'll start from simple things, and then we will go way deeper. Uh, so I hope everyone will get something uh, to uh, to know uh, uh, in this case. So, so if we if we had the uh, so again, uh, please, uh, of course, like wh whatever you have, kind of the questions, uh, you know, add it via Slido because again, that will give the possibility to everyone just you know add questions and yeah. Ah, uh, it's on the doors. Start, build, grow. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so, uh, so the, the the agenda for the uh, for the presentation is that I will start with introduction, something that is good to know about inventory, and Tiago will talk about you know short ads, uh, creative deep dive, and he will talk about more like creatives. Uh, so actually, in, in some way. Uh, 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 like you know, Dimitri was talking a little bit about you know uh, trends there, and and Tiago will j go just deep, deeper in terms of what we can see based on the Google data for for the topic. Uh, so so like starting, uh, of course, uh, like you no, know, we need to it introduce the topic because like not all of you like used any Google campaigns and so on. To just to make sure everyone understand how it works, uh, because it's it's kind of a bit difficult topic. Is that we, in general, whatever kind of platform we use, usually we use the, we kind of get used to, we just add some creatives, and then we see the performance of creatives. In Google campaigns, it's kind of tricky because we have two things called assets uh, and formats. What it means, that uh, we are adding some assets to the campaign, so we are adding some text, we are adding some uh, image ads, we are adding some video, and we are adding some HTML. And then the system is mixing those assets, and the final outcome is the real creative. So actually, the, the cre creative is just a mix of assets, which means that there are a lot of combinations of those creatives that can be from the specific set of assets. Uh, so in this case, let's see, uh, we'll adding the, let's see some text ads, we'll add some video, and then sometimes the, uh, the system will take some additional uh, assets from the store, like information about what is our uh, uh, rating, what is number of downloads, and then we add the, we'll just find uh, like we'll have the final final uh, creatives. And again, it's base, but it's quite important to know. So that's why we can see that the same uh, actually creative done done from the same campaign can be looking differently depending on where that ad is actually displayed. So. It can be that you know we see, for example, the, the art on the search. Uh, it has some elements of uh, just, let's see, image. Sometimes some parts related to the uh, topics taken from the, from the store. It can look like differently in the search. Uh, sometimes it can just include in video. So, okay, we just add the building blocks, blocks like in Lego, and then the system creates the final creatives. That is just creates uh, it's just you know creating blocks from from that uh, from that Lego, yeah. So that can be like uh, let's see, we have the one example when we just you know go to the search and we write, for example, RPG games, and then we have creative that is just taking some part from the text, but then it's taking some uh, some information from the from the Play Store, for example. Let's see, is the information about the ratings, it's taking information about the the number of ratings. And in the same way, we could have, let's see, uh, if we go, for example, to the, to the, to the play, uh, and then uh, creative done from the same assets could be looking differently. I know it's based, but it's quite important to understand it, to, uh, to, to actually uh, see the, the outcome of my next slides. 
And then uh, uh, the same set of creatives can actually contain a lot of different topics. Like, for example, we can have some creatives that are just taking the video that we added to the, to the campaign, uh, but it, will, it can include some information about price, number of installs. Uh, it, it can actually include some screenshots taken from the, uh, from the store listing. So a lot of possible combinations that are just done for the same game. So that's why we cannot say about just one format in terms of Google Creatives. We say about sometimes tens of different formats uh, that we need to kind of look at the, the, the differently. Yeah? And of course, sometimes that creatives can be taken from uh, like landscape video, sometimes from Square, and some, some, sometimes from the, from the portrait uh, uh, data. Okay, so that's, uh, so then finally, we have the output, which means that we have different assets that are used for different types of inventory. So for example, if we have some text parts, it can be shown uh, and used for the creatives shown on the play page, on the play browse, on the play search, on the search ads, on the YouTube native, and vice versa, like if we have some uh, video, it can be used for creatives shown on the uh, YouTube true view, so some shown on the YouTube videos. It can be used on some Admo pre-worded. And the same with image and HTML5. So it's whatever you do some campaigns for Google, it's really, really important to understand how it works because you cannot really evaluate performance of Google campaigns without understanding that. So that's the, that's the easy part. And then there actually comes way kind of more advanced and uh, asking, okay, how actually that inventory looks like? So what is really important and good to know if we talk about those campaigns? So that's, for example, the look at the inventory uh, for the Google Play. So let's see, we have a few different categories. So I just took the data about some gaming categories, some non-gaming categories, and some hybrid categories. Like, you know, when actually the apps play quite important role. Yeah? So we have, for example, like simulation games. Uh, so we have starting from very casual games, coming to very core games. And then we have starting from uh, very like up first categories, coming to very like hybrid uh, categories where actually usually the, the same player has the mobile app and mobile web presence, yeah? And what is quite important? So in most of the categories, we see really strong importance of text. So in this means that we have a lot of, for example, creatives that are just done in the way that in the creative, you have just the text you added to the campaign, and then there is added information from the listing, like number of reviews, your, your score, and then the final, uh, the final, uh, uh, inventor, the final creative that user will see in, really on his mobile phone. And that's, by the way, the, uh, install, uh, the system by the, by the install. So that's why, you know, uh, in many cases, for example, we put so much care around video, around, you know, images, but we just add very random stuff in terms of, for example, text to the, to the campaigns, and we don't know that this text is so important, actually, because if we look even at that inventory, uh, that text will be shown in the, for example, with all, uh, almost all play inventory related to, to, uh, to USC, will actually include text ads. Because again, coming back earlier, for example, here, we see that actually most of the, most of the, most of the ads is actually either text with added some elements from the listing, for example. Uh, if we go uh, deeper and we compare it with, for example, on iOS, it's a little bit different story because in this case, we see that uh, in iOS, much higher share of inventory will be video. That's why, for example, a lot of people are approaching the uh, Google Play and iOS campaigns in the same way, but they have totally diff uh, like really big difference be because for iOS, most of the inventory is either on rewarded or on uh, or YouTube, which means that majority inventory is just the video. And again, here is like the, the, the example. Like we have, for example, we see some, 
some some we are looking at some video on YouTube and then we see the the vid, the, the ad coming from the specific uh, like app or a specific game. And in this case, why it matters so much? Because for example, like you know, if we if we look at the inventory and we know that most of that uh, most of that inventory on the play is, for example, text, which means that we see a lot of like inventory related to text. That's why, for example, in general, the 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 life of the uh, of the creative on play, oh, sorry, on the Android uh, Android campaigns, is way longer than, for example, the life of creative on iOS, because on iOS. A lot of inventor is coming from YouTube, for example, which means that if we have the user who is you know, seeing that ad a few times, it's, it gets bored much more quicker than, for example, in terms of Android. So that's why if we, for example, look at the creatives in the, on the Android, it can be that the same creative can be used even for many months because the inventory is really big and then the number of variations that can user can see is really a lot. Uh, versus, for example, on iOS, much higher share of that inventory will be just a few formats, including the, the video. So then that uh, video fatigue is much faster, which means that, for example, the Google campaigns on iOS are much more similar to other, let's see, networks than in case, for example, Android campaigns on, on, uh, on, on, on uh, Google campaigns. Small detail, but uh, quite important. So, uh, so that's why... Uh, and of course, there are some, some categories where this share of, uh, of this uh, text uh, creative is much higher, like, for example, in general apps, because a lot of those uh, uh, ads are actually shown just on the content, on like different ad mob related content. So it's quite good uh, to know as well. Then there is actually quite interesting point if we look even deeper at the data. Because what it really shows, it shows that uh, the data is, I just compared two groups of the, of the companies advertising with Google, like really big ones and really small ones. And what we see, that number is just, what is the ratio of the video inventory, uh, bigger player versus smaller player? So the bigger the column, the bigger difference between bigger players and smaller players. So we see that in general, the uh, video inventory tends to be more exclusive, tends to be a little bit more expensive, uh, tends to have a little bit higher uh, uh, eCPM. So that's why, in general, uh, if we have, for example, campaigns when we have very low bits, very often we will not get into the video inventory at all, or that share of that video inventory will be very low. So that's why, for example, uh, uh, the more competitive, of course, the, the specific genre, like you know, in case we have match three or like strategy games, which are like extremely competitive uh, 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 genres, uh, the bigger uh, difference will be with, uh, with between uh, like smaller players and, and, and big, bigger players. Uh, and then actually even, even go even deeper, if we, for example, compare this video inventory uh, for, uh, okay, what is the difference between India versus US. So what is the share of the video inventory uh, for the specific subcategories? If we compare the number of installs in, uh, sorry, num share of video uh, spent on uh, India versus US. And what we see, there are two aspects. The first one is that in general, of course, there are some locations that have very young audience, which is especially India, MENA, that we have a lot of audience be, be, uh, with the age below, like you know, 30, in those and it's like you know, Southeast Asia, for example, in those markets, we have much higher share of video inventory, because of course the video consumption is much higher. So that's why I would say the the creatives shown on the video will be much more important for those markets than, for example, for the US. With one big exception is that we see that ratio, especially. Uh, important for US and stronger for US for those most competitive uh, uh, genres. So it seems that a lot of inventory on video is expensive, but bringing extremely high value users. So that's why if we have those categories 
like in this case, we have, let's see the match three, and we have, for example, like strategy games. Then in those categories, uh, advertisers are really pushing heavily video inventors, for example, in the US. Uh, because that video inventor is bringing really high value users. So the more like whale based, uh, uh, well and whale driven specific category, the bigger and more important actually the video is becoming even in very uh, non emerging markets. And the same actually we see in this case, that's why we have so much higher share of like, you know, this video inventory for top players in those two very competitive uh, categories because video inventory works extremely well for them. So it's really, again, it's, it's, it's like in many cases, we just look at the, of course, the Google campaign and just like one box, but it's quite important to understand actually how, how it works. Uh, and then if, if we go even deeper, of course, uh, like more and more players are thinking about, you know, it's like, you know, this Google campaign is just black box. You just add some creatives and then they're just shown everywhere. But more and more players are trying to understand like, actually how actually I really I can adjust the creatives to be shown and the specific types of inventory. And one very simple distinction of the inventor we have, for example, like you know, cinematic uh, creatives and this uh, when we have uh, you know very you know uh, like triple A uh, like creatives, very high high quality, which are actually extremely. Mm, seems to be extremely well working on landscape and on uh, like, especially on the landscape mode for users, for high value users. And then uh, we see that, you know, those creatives work very well uh, there versus, for example, uh, uh, we have like another approach when we have, let's see, the rather portrait, portrait mode which actually happens more often when the user has just the phone like you no know, in just more like in the horizontal uh, uh, no sorry in the vertical in the vertical uh, in the vertical way and actually it's getting even quite interesting if we look at the data because if we look at the data and compare a few different categories we see that for example the okay, the more casual the specific genre both on the gaming non -ca non gaming case the higher share of inventory coming from the portrait. So in this case, we see really high uh, uh, number of uh, like, you know, uh, installs coming from, let's see, casual simulation. And then from, let's call it very casual non-gaming uh, categories like, you know, tools, let's see. But the more heavy, the more uh, uh, like, you know, user heavy and user weight driven category, the higher actually share of the landscape. So that's why we see, for example, very high uh, number of installs coming, for example, from this landscape in role playing casino. And the same would, very similar would see, for example, from strategy games. And then we see, for example, the same case, for example, for finance, where actually uh, it's not about number of users, but about their quality. Because again, coming to the point, usually the portrait installs are a bit cheaper, they are just wider, versus this, uh, this, uh, 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 this kind of landscape are usually more uh, shown on the inventor that is more like, you know, uh, exclusive and more like, you know, uh, high value users oriented. Again, quite interesting point and I think quite good to remember whatever you, you think uh, about those uh, creatives. So it's not always that you need to create, uh, uh, you know, just create the creatives. Okay, let's, let's do the same creative idea, for example, for, for pro portrait square and the landscape. Let's make sure that we remember that, okay, those landscapes should be more about, you know, the much higher engagement. Uh, because actually, even if we look deeper, we see that uh, specific subcategories have actually uh, there is much higher share of installs coming, for example, from like longer, uh, longer creatives versus some uh, subcategories. They have more like uh, shorter creatives. For example, you see we have like role playing and casino games where a lot of installs are coming from very even long creatives because again, 
those are very core uh, core genres, so actually high value user genres. So usually user, it's not just, okay, he see the ads and install that instantly. He needs to find the difference. Okay, what is the difference between that game and another RPG game I just played in the past? Versus we have, of course, uh, we, we know some categories like, you no, know, let's see, casual games where actually, uh, or uh, let's see some, uh, like, you know, let's call it casual uh, non-gaming uh, categories, where actually that decision around install is quite quick, yeah, because uh, it's actually quite quick decision to make, okay, should I try it or not? Because that's usually the categories for much wider audience, Versus if we see like no like no role playing in casino, then uh, it's not about the number of users, but but more about the quality and of course the addressable audience much 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 shorter. And usually uh, those people are the people who it's much harder to actually move them from one gate to another. Yeah, so that's why even if we have the users, usually uh, like the. Uh, it can be that the same user is playing a few casual games at the same time, versus if we talk about like strategy, role playing in casino, it's rather that he's like playing some specific game for a long time already. So it's much harder actually to persuade him to, to move to another game. So that's why even that, that creative needs to be more engaging, longer, uh, and showing much better, okay, what is the real reason why you should really actually install that specific app? Okay, so that's why uh, uh, it's good to remember about that. That's why it's, it's quite a member to, um, to know that if we look at the creatives, it's not that Google is just another inventory. Very often you need to approach it uh, creative differently once you just use the, uh, create the, uh, the creative for Unity or for other networks. Because again, it's not just about the final format, it's about the assets and how they're actually set together. So it's good to remember, it's made, so, it, so that's, I actually created the presentation to make sure that if you have some like creative teams or you are doing some UA or like you have the, some growth, that's really good understanding, you know, how actually those creatives are taken together uh, because the final outcome will actually, uh, will, will, will show it, yeah? So that's why, uh, not always the same creatives that will work, for example, for Unity or like for Facebook will work uh, very well, for example, for, for Google, especially in the specific categories. Uh, and that uh, uh, would be uh, from, uh, from my side. Uh, let's move to the Tiago's part. Tiago? Thank you. Uh, amazing presentation, Marius. So let me go with the shorts as deep dive, the nearest format on gaming and apps. I'm Thiago, I'm the Gaming Grow Consultant for Google and happy to talk over to GameCam today. So basically, what are shorts? Uh, did my slide transition? Did. Yeah. All right. Apparently it's frozen, right? Okay, now it's moving. Perfect, so what are shorts? Uh, so we have the vertical full screen that can be between 10 to 60 seconds. We see that 15 seconds works the best for both uh, apps and games, but you can definitely do like 30 seconds and more. And also, uh, how do we, how is the UX? You can see in the slide here, you can discover at the YouTube mobile, for example, and then you can watch, or you can also create your own. So today we'll cover like the tips on how you can create it and also how you can leverage our strategy to make the parts of the videos. Some quick stats, YouTube Shorts already reached 1.5 billion monthly login users compared to 2021 uh, for the 2022 stats and also surpassed 30 billion daily views. So we are really trending with YouTube Shorts and it's definitely one strategy that you should be focusing on your Google Ads campaigns. So how, how is the YouTube Shorts UX? As you can see, there's the viewable area in yellow and also some of the variables on the gray side. That's the ad of your icon and also your name and then a call to action. So to type to this inventory, very important for you to have the aspects on 916, which is mainly vertical ads. 
And then where uh, we're showing YouTube Shorts. So basically it's all over the funnel. So you can go with app campaigns for installs, for example, and also for actions and for value. So on the app campaigns, we launched already 100%. And you can see the Clash of Clans example and how, how it looks like the UX. Then we also have for video action campaigns with feeds, which is the second example of the Google Pixel phone. And then for discovery, uh, the image ads there, for example, as you can see the Google Pixel phone too, uh, is all across the board for performance too. So you can definitely tap the inventory, which is new users and quality users as the inventory's video, like Marius mentioned. Uh, adding a vertical video asset, actually we did a research within the YouTube inventory. We've seen that each of the vertical video can add 10 to 20% more conversions per dollar spent. So it's really important to have the vertical ads uh, besides the landscape, which is like more trivial. So with that, you can get high efficiency on CPIs and CPAs, and also make sure that you tap into the new inventory and surf the global trend, which is this market opportunity. So we'll cover now the four tactics for you to make the best short ads. So the first tactic is to fill in the gaps. We'll show you how you should be using the full uh, part of the video. Tactic two is the vertical hybrid. This is actually a strategy that we do for retention on the user viewing the videos. And that kind of works for all of the videos at the YouTube uh, of the Google Ads inventory. Third is leading with a short hook. That's like how you can actually use a hook for the first three seconds of the video and make sure the user watches everything. And then four is repurposing social assets. So how you can show social uh, elements that can make person to relate. Filling the gaps, the, our first strategy here, the selling point is actually using frameworks. So as you can see the bomb, Example here, there's the creative opportunity on the top and the bottom. This is getting more and more famous for especially RPG and strategy games. They are using this kind of static image on the top with the logo or with a character and also on the bottom and then the video on the middle. So this is super important uh, to fill in the gaps as also better for the UX and viewability and also for your brand building. Then uh, the vertical hybrid is actually how you can get the retention and show the most important visuals for your video. Uh, so basically it starts with a high, so you can have like a voiceover or a brand logo appearing in the beginning. So it, you trigger the attention for the user. And then you can show some brand cues on like palettes and colors and characters that's representing the brand. And then actually go down in the heartbeat and actually show unexpected shifts that were not expected in the storyline, ending with multiple peaks, and then get the attention ending the video as a CTA or also uh, making the story unfinished for the user to be curious to download the app. One hot tip here is that you can actually use past YouTube uh, ads data on YouTube analytics to actually see where your audience retention curves were the best and also resize previous videos to YouTube shorts. So this is something that all the different ads are leveraging and working perfectly. Then we have the shorts hook. So basically here we are only tapping to the most appealing visual and narrative cues that are standing on YouTube Shorts. We are seeing that supers, those kind of texts with background on white is very important, just like the other networks like TikTok, for example. So the Shorts hooks and the text showing up right on the beginning of the three to five seconds of the videos. Also the original ad, uh, you can actually like, if you have a cinematic video or any other videos that you were using for YouTube to view or in AdMob product videos, you can actually do that vertical version and probably do 15 seconds or 30 seconds. And then also leverage the CT card, which is very important in the end to get your users to do the action. Then repurposing the social part, is to actually how you can run the vertical social creative that you already run organically on your communities or your social community building. 
uh, the main strategy here is to actually add it into the shorts, uh, so making it vertical, and also can be up to 60 seconds. For community videos and uh, tutorials, etc., we see that they have a bit of more of the video length, uh, so this is an uh, important strategy to go with. So I brought up some examples here uh, for you to see that are trending a lot in YouTube Shorts. Let's see the first one. Diga que você é carioca sem dizer que você é carioca. Bora lá, eu começo. This is an apps example for uh, flip flops, and then we have two gaming examples. This one uh, is they are using the strategy of filling out the gaps on the videos with two frames. As you can see, there's the gamer and also the game. Guys, can we rush B along and spray the wall? Why do you yeah, sound like fun. Jonas? I get that a lot, don't worry. And then the third example is actually a gameplay. Uh, it's a repurposed uh, video that was already on the YouTube preview uh, campaigns, and then they repurposed to vertical YouTube shorts. <laughs> So you can see that it's very fast, the videos, very snackable, uh, make sure to leverage that. And the takeaways is to actually use vertical videos, the ratio. The content can be social content or gameplay. The audio is very important. All the videos have audio, uh, either the person speaking or like sounds and effects or voiceovers. And the call to action always uh, have it in by the end. So you make sure that the user action on it. Now, I also bring you uh, some examples of how you can build videos within Google Tools. And this is free to use. So it's amazing and also easy. So basically, we have the video builder. Uh, we can send the links uh, after the event. The video builder is a tool from Google Ads that you can actually use templates and also build your video. We can also have a voiceover easy creation, meaning that you can put uh, voiceovers in your videos using Google AI. And it's great because it's supporting a lot of languages. So if you want to export to Germany or France, for example, Korea, we have the voiceovers uh, speaking in those languages. And there's more languages that we cover that will, that will be in the link. Then uh, by creating the template video, you can actually do resizings and cutting them. Uh, to, for example, if you create a landscape video, you can use Ads Creative Studio, which is another tool to resize the vertical or to resize the square. So it makes it easy for you to complete the videos and be creative excellent at Google Ads campaigns. We also have some ad production partners that we recommend by geolocation. So if you want to export to Japan or to Korea or even to some European countries, we make sure that we provide the certified agencies that we partner with and then we recommend the most. Lastly, for more creative insights, you can check the YouTube creative directory. All of these links will be uh, follow up after the event, so you can uh, see at your own pace. Then let's move to creative trends on gaming, the favorite part. So for this part, I'm bringing the main insights on RPG strategy, match three, merge casual and casual. So first one on match and merge, what we're seeing across, you've seen these videos for sure uh, in the market, but this is also something that's happening at Google Ads and starting there. So kind of like making a variation of those or even combining those uh, trends would be great for you to index more span on video for Google. So the first uh, one is normal gameplay with special effects. The highest in scale legend, meaning that the video spends a lot in Google Ads. And this index IPM is how it compares to the category. So one X IPM should be the category of the, uh, the IPM of the category. So one, the one X is slightly better. The main secret sauce for this video is actually the background contrasting colors with the gems. There's a lot of uh, research that 
been done. And we see that videos that, at least for Match 3, that has more dark color backgrounds with the games being colorful, performs better. So this is something that you want to, might try out. Then what's really trending across a lot of Merge and Match 3 uh, videos is user testimonials, and especially using sub-celebrities or celebrities. In this case, we have uh, Rick Rothman. Hello, everyone. It is Rick Hoffman from Suits. I wanted to jump on here real quick to tell you about something. I've been asked quite a bit about, you know. So here we're talking about the benefits of the games and how he loves the games. Uh, and lastly, we ha still have fake gameplay trending. Uh, the main strategy is that those advertisers that are actually putting those fake gameplays as bonus levels inside the game. So across the user acquisition funnel, App Store and inside the game content, it makes like streamlined messaging. Oh. <laughs> All right, so let's move to the game RPG and strategy. First one is influencers. An influencer is very important for you to use different demographics, uh, such as woman influencer or man influencer, if you want better reach. Uh, it's actually trending really well, especially when tied to rewards. So we we'll see this great example. Hey, I wish I got these gifts when I first started playing. So if you haven't played the game yet, now would be the best time to join. Every new player will receive a free starter pack to help speed up your progress and catch up with and then second is still uh, like uh, on the data AI presentation, uh, the first presentation mentioned Genshin Impact. There's still like with cross platform strategy and the gameplay is super compelling and also focusing on live operations and what's new, still trending. <laughs> So in the end card, instead of showing uh, CTA, there is like what's new in the game. Third, uh, we have the kind of like gameplay challenging the user from Avony. It's still time. Yes. All right. And lastly, we have casual games. So first one is choice options. Uh, we do your own uh, collection here. This is highest in scale and very good IPMs. Second, we have uh, the misleading gameplay. It's actually uh, like a shift of the, what the real gameplay is. And then third, there's the fail in the end, the element that's trending. Hey, my bros, have you seen these little shrimps merging to fight us? They're hilarious. Watch them, Jack. Do they really believe they have a chance with us? Jack, Josh, shut up. They want. And then the third one. <laughs> the humor there. Uh, so let's. Hey, my. Let's make sure that we recap. On the creative elements, these are the highest trending at the Google Ads videos. So this is something that you might be considering. First is call to action. We've seen that call to action has been used also, not only the end part of the video, but also before. So you can also experiment with that. Text overlays are key, especially to combine with the message of the video. So being using in the beginning of the video or, or a header, or even to uh, a sub title from what the narrator is talking uh, really helps and for inclusivity as well. On the reward side, you've seen the example from Ray there, the Power Star there, and also there's promo codes, especially for the RPG category. Pen presence is a must for tutorials ads and for match three, merge, casual, we see that's more female kind of hand. Uh, for hardcore games, we see a bit more neutral hands. So this is something that you can also experiment. Time counters and lives is super important to create that thrilling emotion for the user to actually succeed in the game. 
and then special effects as we see in the kind of first example. Uh, lastly, uh, we have the character or the person focus. So you can be either like character selections or the influencer choice options uh, that can be either like uh, decisions or also a selection of a variety of uh, objects. Then a progression is key for RPG and strategy games. Uh, it's very important to show how you can evolve. Fail and win, actually fail is trending more, but instead of having that big button on fail, it just is subtle that the user fail. And then lastly, the end cards, we've seen that a part of the normal end card, like P now, we've seen more of the what's new in the game or also like variety of levels that you can unlock. Cool. Uh, within that, uh, I end the creative part on the videos, and this is how you can actually strategize your videos and organize them with ad groups. So for your ad group strategy, when you organize your campaign, you can actually buckle up the themes of your videos within content types, which would be to actually bundle all your cinematic videos, like clearly movie like with Supercell, for example, example here, under cinematic ad group, or you can do in-app game, like for gameplay videos or characters, for example. And also you can have another ad group, like real life with the influencers or UGC kind of contents. This is a way to organize your ad group strategy that's famous. Or you can use uh, user motivations. Uh, so for instance, you can use social connection kind of videos, like using a, a testimony from a user or the narrating. Or you can focus more on the expertise, how the users can be uh, very pro level. Or you can even focus more on individual individuality and creation, more creative and how the user can spot the world. Or fourth is a novelty on excitement escape, how the user can be immersed as the character, living the character life there. Uh, lastly, we also have user profiles. Uh, so as you know, there's more and more communities growing in the gaming side. So first one is friends only, like your closer community and how you can actually leverage your community to grow. Uh, second is gamer girl boss, boss. We see more and more females playing games. So highlighting female characters can be more appealing to that audience that acquired or the gear geeks on collectibles and characters collection. So there's more ways to actually do the, your ad group strategy. You can do by cultural localization. You can do unique selling point features. You can focus on light pops or seasonal or holidays like Christmas, Easter, and so on. So you can experiment and see what works the best for you. And lastly, to evaluate performance, super important for you to have a North Star uh, metric. For sure, it's like how your campaign scales, but also your ROI. However, uh, one important factor is that depending on your com app campaign, we focus on optimizing for that KPI. So for TCPI, we are focusing on installs. So checking IPM for your credit is the most important, which is installs multiplied by 1,000 divided by impressions. For TCP actions, actions is the most important. So one metric to check that's not so famous, but it's important to see is APM, which is actions versus a thousand divided by impressions, actions being like tutorial complete or in a purchase. And lastly, for T ROAS, focus on the ROAS of the, which is conversion value by cost at Google, because the company is focused on the ROAS side. All right, with that, thank you so much. Uh, it was a pleasure to see you all. And I'll be moving to back to Marius. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, 